name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we remember Joe and Rick Olson at this Mass. And to help us enter more worthily into these sacred mysteries, let us first acknowledge our sins. And Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then empty too is our preaching, empty too your faith. Then we are also false witnesses to God because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is in vain. You are still in your sins. Then, who's, who, then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiful people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry, hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior of those who flee from their foes to refuge at your right hand. Hide me in the shadow of your wings, but I in justice shall behold your face on waking. I shall be content in your presence. Lord be with you. And with your I read from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus journeyed from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were twelve, were the twelve and some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom the seven demons had gone out. Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Shiza. Susanna, and many others provided for them out of their resources. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> the 
I've often thought that this um, passage from 1 Corinthians, so what we heard today in the first reading, it, it sounds very repetitive. It's like Paul is really driving home a point. And uh, that's maybe one reason why people repeat themselves so much, is they want to make crystal clear the point they, they're making so uh, the, the people then absorb it. Um, so that there's no mistaking that, uh, that we speak about the bodily resurrection of the dead, that we will be raised, that Christ has been raised, and these are intimately connected to one another. Um, and in fact, this is the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. This basically is the conclusion of the, the book. You, there's uh, the 16th chapter um, with the final uh, comments. But this is the last major element, and he speaks about the resurrection of the dead and, and what life eternal is like. And so why for St. Paul is this such an important thing? Why is the resurrection of the body such an important thing, Jesus' bodily resurrection. And I would suggest that it's this, it's that we were made body and soul and that there is an intimate connection between the body and the soul. There's an intimate connection between our physical reality and our spiritual reality. And I think sometimes just by examining our own lives, we can recognize that this is true. Um, so for example, if a person is very tired, physically they're very tired, if they haven't slept well, will they be able to pray? I, we probably can all testify from experience that when we're too tired, then neither can we pray. So the physical intrudes upon the spiritual. Or similarly, when we're sick, we're not able to give our full attention in spiritual matters to our prayer life. So even physical infirmity can limit our spiritual ability, our ability to focus on the Lord and to, to uh, raise our mind to the Lord. And then when it comes to the moral sphere, how important it is for us also in the flesh to be disciplined, to rein in sexual desires, uh, lest too, too free a rein is given to that and that intrudes in the spiritual life. Um, to be disciplined when it comes to food and drink, we know that discipline in bodily matters also leads to spiritual discipline and in fact we are enriched because of that. Oftentimes we talk about, for that very reason, acts of self-denial, mortification, or penances. And these we say are spiritual exercises, but we perform them even in the flesh. What if we're too attached to physical things? If we are too greedy, if we have avarice, if we're too attached to monetary, uh, to physical goods or to monetary wealth, of course then where our heart is is where our treasure is. And that means that we are then giving less time and attention and we are being drawn away from true heavenly wealth, the physical intruding on the spiritual. Or if we are jealous of other people, right? say they're jealous of their worldly status or worldly accomplishments, those are all um, what St. Paul would characterize as, as the flesh or the, the, the uh, lower part of our nature that is somehow intruding on that. Rather, we should rise above that so as to not give in to anger or petty jealousies or rivalry. Now, why would St. Paul make this point at the end of his first letter to the Corinthians? I would say it's because if you go back and read the previous 14 chapters, these were all problems the Corinthians had. They were all dealing with these things, and St. Paul goes through extensive detail about all of these things. So, of course, it makes sense. So here they are, I think, dealing with lots of problems of worldly attachment and things that are related to the flesh. And But at some point, though, sometimes I think we, we kind of think we can just sort of put that aside and then, well, I'll just go be spiritual now, as though the two were disconnected. And so the Corinthians gather together and they think, oh, well, if I just pray, it will fix all of this. And that not to be little prayer or to say the prayer isn't effective, but the thing is, well, where's the problem? Well, let me show you where the problem is. The problem is in their, um, the, their attachments that connect them to all of these uh, sins or weaknesses or temptations that I was just describing that are all rooted in one way or another in the world or in the flesh uh, or in our uh, corrupt, um, our, our sinful human nature. Uh, that part that has been touched and tainted by original sin. So instead, recognizing that we are body and soul and that we in fact need to discipline those parts that seek to uh, turn away from the Lord and bring them into harmony with our better spiritual selves so that way body and soul, we are in fact as an entire person, as an integral person focused on the Lord, then that really is the recipe for true happiness. Don't deny the resurrection of the body because the body is to be consecrated and made sacred just as much as the soul. So body and soul, we worship the Lord here on earth and after the resurrection of the dead, we shall do so in heaven. 
So our faith is not in vain. Jesus is incarnate. The word has been made flesh. And by Jesus dying in the flesh and rising in the body, Jesus has consecrated us, body and soul, and given us that gift of salvation. So let us then rejoice in that and not be afraid of the challenge, really, that St. Paul sets in front of the Corinthians and that he also sets in front of us. stand now to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the holy people of God, that we might be disciplined in body and soul so as to serve the Lord with in integrity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray that by our living out of the gospel uh, with great zeal, that we might inspire others to seek out the truth, to come to know our Lord Jesus. And we pray for all of those who have entered our RCIA program this year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our school children, for blessings upon all students, and for a successful school year, especially that they might be taught not only about uh, worldly science, but also about spiritual realities and be open to God's call. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace and tranquility in our society, for blessings upon us during this election year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, the recovery of those who are ill, and for the end of the spread of infection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, especially the deceased members of the Olson family for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for the safeguarding and the protection of our religious liberties and the Church's freedom. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in the kindness, in your kindness, accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things 
and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and Lewis, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The, uh, we've made more progress in the office, so we got some furniture in there, which is it's all it's going to be very, very nice. So we're waiting for the, the final touches and the other rooms to be done and the rest of the furniture to come in. But the office will be open today, so we, will, we have a functional office again. 
uh, and we look forward to, to finishing it out and making it uh, more complete. The Lord be with you. Be with you sir. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.